Hello everyone, this is RaySpace and welcome to my career mode playthrough in Microsoft Flight Sim 2024. I've been doing career mode during YouTube live streams, but I think it'd be best if I produced an edited condensed version as a proper YouTube video or a YouTube video series. And we begin in the Central Valley of California, close to where I live, but not quite. And we are introduced to our, I don't know, associate, instructor, something like that, somewhere in the middle, Tex Costello. Initially I thought Tex Costello was AI voiced, but then hearing the actual AI voices, I decided that he might be an actual voice actor. Um, so I apologize if it's a voice actor, but uh, the person seemed very close to being an AI, but the AI is much, much worse, actually. Uh, so we just take the Cessna 172 up uh, to an altitude of 1,600 feet, take a look at the airport, and that's our first flight. Not a whole lot of guidance initially. Uh, just doing that much and we don't get to land I thought maybe we would land but no they just end the mission right there and that's a success and so we next aim to get a private pilot license and it gives you these training missions you can do but I do not go through all of that uh, but it seems comprehensive I will go through the instrument flight rating tutorials uh, because I'm curious to see how those are and probably everything past that so uh, well, everything that I don't think is super obvious, I will go through. I am interested what people think are missing from the tutorials, uh, what tutorials I should do if possible. I'm not uh, expert at all things pilotry, but at least I know how to start a Cessna 172. They wanted me to do Control E, but I go, well, I can start it at least. Uh, really, just get the battery on, get the ABMX on, and turn the key would be good enough for this one. Uh, there are more complicated startup procedures, but this... And, you know, I, I do the lights liberally. Actually, I didn't even have to turn on the fuel pump. Uh, there's a fuel pump switch there. and But I didn't have to do that or anything. Did it not dock points for anything either? I didn't even turn on the second screen on the avionics there, but... They Oscar are not docking points for that, number. and in general, these check rides seem super easy. These are by far the easiest check rides I've ever had in a game. Like the Neofly one was much harder. And I'll be honest right away, I think that the Neofly career is better than this career. I, I like the Neofly career better, I think it's more thorough, but it doesn't have the tutorial stuff, of course. It's not training you in any way, there's no none of that business with Oscar Neofly, five, so integrating no that aspect three, with five, this career nine, seven, is definitely is better. Runway, one, and again, there are things that I don't know or I'm not good at as well that I would like to learn more about. I certainly don't know anything about how to douse fires, uh, so, uh, but I still think that it'd be nice uh, with the Neofly career uh, app that's a free app available for Flight Sim 2020 for those who don't know. So that was the career app that I was using in Flight Sim 2020. I think if that can make use of the kinds of missions that we have available in Flight Sim 2024 now, that would be great. I think there's still room for Neofly to be a thing here. Uh, definitely. So as I turn it off, I still don't go through and do Control Shift E or whatever they recommend. I actually shut things off and I passed a little bit of respect to traffic pattern issue there but otherwise did fairly well even though the landing was sort of iffy. I will do iffier landings during this video. So uh, private pilot license is there. I can fly those planes potentially though I don't find any missions for those planes hanging around. Uh, mostly it's for, for the Cessna 172. The next type of mission, these specializations are the types of missions and so right now we can only do the quote-unquote first flight type and then we can do the ferry mission which is going from one airport to another. The first flight is go, uh, around the same airport and so we still have to do this first flight one because I'm not qualified for the ferry mission Everything's flight. Ready, David. You can initiate boarding. And here's the other AI. They have weird emphasis, but also weird writing. Uh, it would have been better if they had better writing. Oscar 5-2 uh, traffic Cessna November. 
70549er is taxiing to runway tree five. Their pronunciation is fine. It's just that they have awkward pauses and the writing is weird sometimes. It's not things that people would naturally say. It comes across as if it was like Google translated from another language sometimes. Uh, but anyway, here we are taking off and this time I'm carrying passengers. The first one was with Tex and then the second one was with the flight uh, test person for the check ride. Hey brother, I'm sure we'll see places we know. It's gonna be awesome. Maybe we yeah. don't recognize anything. Well, no, it definitely stresses an emphasis there that are the Even issue right, with the AI no voices. Yeah, and as far as the little gates are concerned, you can turn them off, but only if you assign a key to that. And thanks to a uh, viewer to, for telling me that, I ultimately assign V. But when I use that key to toggle those visual aids, and you can't use any other menu thing. I thought it would be under the assistances. Here's the really bad landing. I thought this is instructive. But I'm totally excited right now. Because I'm interested in the AI reaction to it being shaky like that. Uh, she's totally excited right now, she said. Uh, <laughs> but she recognized that I was shaky, at least. Always that was good. But uh, you would think that would be under the assistances, and it would just session. be one of those checkboxes in the assistances. It's not. Uh, it's not one of those when it comes to those gates that you fly through through the mission. Uh, I, I hope that they do add that to those assistances. Instead, it, yeah, you have to toggle it using a key, but that toggles a whole bunch of other stuff. It, like turns all assistances on or off so i don't want it or all visual assistances on or off so i don't want it to toggle all those things i just want to toggle those gates separately and hopefully they'll add that later on uh, for now we'll keep the gates mostly because if we don't pass through the gates they'll dock points it's going to hurt your score so, and I got B on that one for the really horrible landing. At least it recognized it was a really horrible landing. Uh, but, yeah, I would like as many points as possible so that we can get through this quickly. Uh, after Time all, if you don't get pilot. experience points, you Today, don't get to unlock the better Christ missions. That's region. how that works. And if you don't get the money, you don't get to take the tests. So the money is for the tests and the experience points are for unlocking the types of missions. Now this runway was really thin. I was surprised by how thin this was and uh, at least uh, they're making it clear that I don't have to stay on tarmac when I taxi. <laughs> taxi speed important. Staying on the tarmac or on the on the paved surface while you taxi not so important. Now, this posed some problems. First of all, I tried the skip flight thing. There's a skip option. You can skip taking off the chocks and all that business, the pre-flight, by doing Alt-N. And you can skip various phases of the flight. And I decided to try that out. And what happened was it plopped me closer to the sightseeing area uh, instead of taking long trip over to the sightseeing area. And But I encountered really high speed and it suddenly tossed me really high up. Now what I discovered was that that's actually probably the weather that did that to me. Uh, it wasn't the fact that I skipped ahead so I had to start over because it totally messed up the flight. But it's because I'm flying in the Central Valley of California right now and there was a big storm. Now it cleared most of the clouds for me because I'm supposed to be doing VFR I guess. Um, I don't have an IFR instrument flight rating. I can't do weather aware. I can't see stuff. So it's cleared up the clouds, but okay? the winds are still there. And when we get to the sightseeing here. location, the winds are such that there's a huge thermal going on or whatever it is, it's making me go really fast and lifting me up really quickly. And so I'm trying to stay Is down here. And I'm uh, throttling down, you can see engine number one there. I'm cutting my throttle, but I still keep going up and keep going faster. And so that's a problem. As I approach the sightseeing area, we're supposed to be going at 87 knots, and apparently I overfly an airport. I don't know about that, but we need to be low and slow. 
support of sightseeing, and we cannot get there <laughs> very easily. Uh, so that was a bit of an issue, Be and I think it's because of the weather in the area, and it was picking up on that weather and causing me to go up like this. If I was a glider right now, I'd be thrilled, uh, because this is good glider stuff. And I hope that there are thermals like this in the game now, because the thermals in Flight Sim 2020 were pretty darn weak. I don't know if there are any missions involving gliders, uh, that's one thing that they don't seem to have, uh, but maybe there are challenges or activities involving glider, they're just not part of the career mode. But yeah, I, uh, I want to get back into gliders and see how the thermals are, but and whether it is the thermal visualization, I hadn't turned that on. So the solution was to wait a little bit, A, for the weather to clear a bit, and also to approach this area much slower and lower. And, but even so, I uh, caught a little bit of extra speed and height over at this end, but I mostly avoided it. So yeah, you can see we're past 100. I was not trying to go past 100. I throttled way back. I was trying to get down to 87, which they wanted, but and also on landing here, the wind was really, really rough, and of course the airport is really small, <laughs> so that's why I'm wiggling all over the place, and I'm not gonna be on that little tiny strip. Uh, anyway, if they take it, it's fine by me. If they if they're okay, and they'll let me progress, I'm not going to like fret it too much <laughs> at this point. I, I am going to chop that guy up with my propeller though. I am not here to uphold some arbitrary standards of pilotry. I'm more of a 1920s barnstormer slash Always test cool pilot. Uh, so I'm, I'm used to like it. flying things flight that flight are a little session. bit crazier cool. than a Cessna 172 and things that might randomly fall apart on me. Uh, I'm actually, whenever there are those payware planes that say that they have like 200 failures, I'm going, yes, <laughs> those are the ones I want. I want I want the things to do horrible things to me when I make a mistake. That's that's why I like, this Cessna just you doesn't excite me that much. To be to so I add excitement CBL. by flying it badly, I guess. Anyway, forgive me. But... Uh, all right, so we uh, can get the co commercial pilot license here. That costs another 2,500. I have just enough money for that. So I take that exam and that's not hard. Uh, it says dead reckoning there, and that's a way to do visual uh, navigation, landmark navigation. Uh, you can do those tutorials. I don't do those tutorials because I know about those things, but the test doesn't require you to know any of that. Uh, it doesn't require you to do Dead Reckoning. You get the gates. Even if you didn't have the gates, you could open up the little tablet with tab. You can open up the uh, EFB, the electronic flight ba bag, which is a tablet that will show you your course. Uh, so you really don't need to do Dead Reckoning or visual flight rules at all. Welcome to your CPL check ride, the last stop on your way to become a true professional And pilot. in any case, the flight is really, really simple. It's from Van Nuys to Burbank. Taking off from Van Nuys and Airport and then landing at Bob Hope Airport. You could hardly miss it. <laughs> you can start when you are ready. <laughs> it's, it's, it's only an 11 minute mission. It's like Van the shortest mis mission out of all eight, of them. Nine or, nine or one eight at runway one six. Right, ready for departure, departure to the east. I guess they didn't want to make it hard for you to make money. Do get your clearances, though. The mission steps, uh, if for some reason Clear you don't see them, uh, in the top menu you right can Cessna, make them visible. So if you uh, hover your mouse uh, at the top of the screen, you'll see the upper menu. It'll pop up and that upper menu has the mission steps there. Or you can turn them off if you're annoyed by them for some reason. Van Nuys Tower, Cessna, I'm not sure, but I think the AI voices are localized in Flight Sim 2024. I'll have to check that out. Or there's an option for that. And that might be a better option when it comes to dealing with the fact that they're a little bit awkward Vandai as far Tower as their stresses and stuff. Niner, but Niner, if they're speaking Niner, in an accent, that won't change. be as apparent. I like, I have Beyond ATC, and there the ATC is localized, uh, though in English, or mostly in English, so occasionally they 
have clips that are in the Burbank actual local language, which is weird, but there, any awkwardness in the language doesn't seem as off because of the accent. Um, so I think that could cover it up a little bit. And maybe I should have been flying somewhere else with that option turned on, if that is the case in flights in this version of Flight Sim. Localized voices would be good. Alright, so touching down at Burbank, a little bit of squirreliness on the ground. But certainly not as bad as some of the other places. Burbank has a nice big one runway and it's no excuses for landing badly here. So, as I come to a stop in the parking stand, I still turn off today. things properly. The same attitude and I'm sure that you will have great piloting career. And turning things off is basically just doing the opposite of what you do to turn it on. And I pass, of course. So, yeah, uh, respecting the taxi path was a bad thing, but it's okay. So, ferry flight. We have unlocked the possibility of doing a ferry flight, a point-to-point -point flight, and for each of the things that you can unlock, each of these specializations, uh, you'll have an intro flight for those. And so those are the gold ones. So you have no choice but to do those, and they're elsewhere. Like this one's in Germany. Uh, so they're not in the local area where you're supposed to be doing your flying. Uh, the one place I picked in California, no, we're across the Atlantic. Uh, we do get a little bit of payment for this. There's a contract for 880 credits, but that's not as much as you'll normally get paid for the ferry flights. But it's just an intro one. It is off of a grass strip. Hello, it's Julia right now, here. one thing it's about the AI out. in particular, I'm if we listen to here. this Today's voice. Lucky bird heading to Drawn is this charming little 172 Skyhawk. They the will say 172 Skyhawk instead of just 172. Uh, that's uh, now Tex Costello friend. did say 172, now give this beautiful bird the but they deserves. tend to say 172. And so the text that's given to the AI should just be 172. It should be written out so that they don't say 172. That's one of those things that people doing text-to-speech should be more cognizant of. They sometimes have to write things out or put commas in places that maybe they're not used to. Uh, but that would help a lot. And it doesn't matter for the people reading the like subtitles if it says 172 like that. You know, I think people will understand and uh, the commas will help the pacing of the voices so that they have the pauses in the right location. So those are things they need to work on as far as Echo the Delta writing Mobile. is concerned Delta that'll help things Delta. out. Two Delta Quebec, Juliet, five miles but it's going to be awkward no matter what. So this wasn't too long a flight. A lot of the ferry flights are much longer. And it's a grass strip to grass strip sort of deal. And touchdown. All right. So then after doing that, we are allowed to do ferry missions, which are lucrative, but also take long. So you have to sort of balance out, you know, Echo, maybe Romeo, if you can do Delta sightseeing missions, system. those are actually a little bit quicker Quebec, Juliet, for the same kind of money. I have no idea how we would identify the hold short area sure or the taxi areas, stand without them I putting the boxes there, but... Thanks for your hard work. All right. Still know exactly what those things in front are. There's something. Okay. So I didn't do particularly well there. Not very good landing smoothness. Just barely got a B initially. Well, the aviator performance pushed me past to an A. But yeah, they didn't like my performance. So, well, I don't like furry flights anyway. But 
a little bit more boring because there's less turning and such. It's all in a straight line. But you do get some money. Okay, so I got paid for the first time. And I got to level 6. And that unlocked flight seeing, which is sightseeing. So you just need a commercial pilot license and level 5 to get that. In order to actually start doing the flight seeing missions though, I would have to go do the initial mission, which was also over in Europe. And instead I wanted to try out a ferry flight, and so that's what I did here. But you'll note that the time it says there's one hour, it means one hour. It does take about one hour. Difficulty only one star though. The owner's but... aircraft was in for maintenance, and now that it's fixed he wants it flown back. He's already but yeah, for it. it's just flying this is the 172 for an hour. Flight. In a straight line mostly. Kilo Tango, Charlie Yankee traffic Cessna November 9078, taking off runway, tree zero north departure. So it's pretty much the most boring kind of mission, but minimal AI voices. <laughs> so otherwise with the sightseeing missions you get commentary from the sightseers or stuff like that. So yeah, or uh, even with skydivers. Skydivers is basically after the sightseeing missions, and with the skydivers, they comment sometimes too. So, yeah. There are pluses and minuses to the ferry missions. So, it's just a nice straight row of little gates up ahead, and I decided to fiddle around with the autopilot. So this is the first time using the Opod in the 172 in this version of Flight Sim, of course, in the previous version I did, but I'm actually not used to the Opod on this. I, I have used it before, but I had to remind myself how to use it. Uh, I most often use the Opod only on much larger planes or much faster planes that are harder to handle. Uh, with Cessnas, I normally, and here I'm testing out the drone camera. So I'm using my gamepad to control the drone camera, which I activate. I mapped to the delete key. Uh, so just trying that out, making sure that works uh, because it's a long flight on autopilot. And I, uh, but eventually we get to the traffic pattern and I fly it manually. Uh, but yeah, I was just killing time. And yeah, mostly with smaller planes like this, I fly it manually all the way. But, but an hour is still tedious when you're just flying a straight line. Mostly I would fly something like this for sightseeing. Okay, so parking. Well, that's the hold short right there. The parking's up ahead. Now once again, there's just delivering somebody else's plane from a mechanic to them. I'm sure the but, uh, charges, but I hope my plane didn't take yeah, too much I beating. almost rolled off. I sort of rolled off, and I almost like scraped the tail because I was going up that. And uh, well, the owner sounded skeptical about my piloting there, but anyway, the point is, I completed the mission, I got the money, and no, it wasn't a D but it wasn't particularly good either. So yeah, this uh, reinforced my sense that I do not like ferry missions. C is horrible. Uh, and it was mainly because I was speeding on the taxiway as far as I could tell. But no, I mean, well, that, that probably factored into the respecting the condition of the airplane thing too. So yeah, anyway, I got the money. And I got to level 10 actually, which is quite a boost from level 6 on just one mission. I, I have questions about the levels, but... Alright, so that unlocks the skydiving. So I have progressed, but for now I'm just going to leave it here. So that's as far as I'm going to relay during this video, and I'll pick it up in the next video. I've already done more flying in career mode, so I know the next video is forthcoming. Uh, but for now, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.